the image of the Buddha is recognized all over the world. To find out about its symbolism and what it means to Buddhists, we visit Yasho Mitra, who teaches at the North London Buddhist Centre. Here we have some lotus flowers, which um, you would expect to smell really lovely. But in fact, they don't. They smell quite strange because the reason is that they're not real lotus flowers, they're made of cloth. The reason for that is that we don't get lotus flowers in this country, they don't grow here. But we do get Buddha figures, and here we have Buddha figure here in London. Now this figure, you can see straight away, is not uh, perhaps like your ordinary Buddha figure. You know, it's represented as a Westerner. You know, he actually looks a bit more like a Westerner. And the reason for that is it's very important that we should understand, that we should see and be able to feel that we can become enlightened too. You know, it's not something that's limited to somebody who lives in China or Japan or India. We can do it with your English or whatever. You know. So this figure is made to look a bit more like a Westerner. And I want to tell you some things about the figure. Most Buddha figures sit in what's known as the full lotus position. So he's cross-legged and each foot is resting on the opposite thigh. This, as I said, is known as the full lotus. And the idea is that it's a bit like a lotus flower. You know, lotus flower is a symbol of uh, spiritual development, of un unfolding, you know, unfolding your potential. So that's what's happening in this position. It's like opening. It supports the rest of him. It's, it supports his experience. It supports actually who he is. And he's enlightened. Then we look at the hands. Well, his hands are actually quite relaxed. They're resting one on top of the other. Uh, on his feet. Sometimes though, you get a Buddha whose hands are in a different position. You might find a Buddha figure that's like this. If his hand is in this position, it means that he's teaching. And this is the mudra of teaching. So he's communicating his understanding of reality, of things as they are. Sometimes you'll find his hand in this position, which is the mudra of fearlessness. Simply means that he's not afraid. He'll sit there, face anything. The Buddha has, has faced everything. Uh, there's nothing that scares him. Nothing at all. On other figures, you'll get the other hand in this position, which is the mudra of generosity. You know, he's reaching out as if to help and to give you know, to us, to help us. It's that acting out of kindness and compassion. So with the two together, you have fearlessness and generosity. He's strong, uh, He's, he's powerful, but he's also open and kind and interested in us. What else can I say? Well, let me talk a bit about his face. You can see that he's very still and very focused. Uh, his eyes, looking down, straight ahead, unwavering. Uh, wave my hand in front of his face and nothing happens. He's completely focused and concentrated. His mouth is supposed to have a very, very slight smile. You know, it's like it's representing the fact that he's spontaneous, he's playful. Actually, he's friendly. You know, he's not just a concentrated, focused man. He's actually a, a friendly guy who wants to come out and meet people. You know, he's generous. Sometimes on a Buddha figure, you'll get a mark on the forehead just here, which represents the third eye. Well, what is the third eye? You might have heard of it. Well, what it represents is that the Buddha sees not only with both eyes, but he sees with his mind, he sees really clearly, he sees everything, he understands everything. Mm -hmm. Similarly, these great big earlobes, which I don't know if you can see them clearly, but you know, they're much bigger than mine or yours, represent the Buddha's wisdom. And if I put my head next to his, you probably notice that something that I haven't got, <laughs> which he has. Uh, is something missing. Well, I'm not enlightened. The Buddha is. This here is an Ushnisha, and that represents the enlightened consciousness of the Buddha, which, which means that, well, what he has understood, what he sees, what he experiences, is far beyond what an ordinary, ordinary human being experiences and sees. And if you take in the whole figure, from the legs, through the feet, the hands, the upper body, the head, you get a sense of calmness. You get a sense of the stillness of the Buddha's mind. You know, that's represented in his body, the way he's sitting here. Like I said already, he doesn't move, you know, push him and nothing happens. But he's also 
very strong, he's got broad shoulders. Well, not all Buddha figures are muscly. This one is. He's got strong biceps. He's really, you know, thick set. He gives you a sense of power, you know, which is spiritual power. It's like his power within. This guy is really strong. Not necessarily physically, but mentally and emotionally, he's strong. He's no pushover, and nobody can push him around. So you get this combination of qualities of calmness and stillness and serenity with power, with strength. Yeah. Quite a combination. And there it is. That's the, the Buddha figure that sits here in our shrine here in North London, giving us all a sense of what we can become, yeah. the fact that we can become enlightened too, like the Buddha did.